This noon, we're monitoring a series of threats made to schools across our state. The FBI is aware of what's happening and says right now the threats do not seem credible. Aspen schools, Boulder High School, Brighton High School, Canyon City High School, Estes Park High School, the Englewood Schools Campus, Glenwood Springs High School, and the Roaring Fork District, as well as Gilpin High School, all received some sort of threat that put the schools on lockdown. At this point, none of those threats have been substantiated and no one has been injured. Now, news reporter Cole Sullivan is in Boulder right now. That's where one of those first calls came in. Cole Boulder High School is now closed for the day. It's closed for the day. We just heard from the police chief here in Boulder who is not ready to call these series of calls from across the state a hoax just yet. But she says there are no reports of injuries and no sign that a shooting actually took place here at Boulder High School behind me. The, uh, the uh, um, 911 call, excuse me, came in first thing this morning, about 8.30 this morning, into CU's non-emergency line. The chief said she had heard that call, said it was chilling. It was a male voice saying that he was outside of Boulder High School, ready to go inside and shoot inside. And then on the call, you heard the sound of gunshots. The chief says there's no indication that anybody was actually here shooting at the school. They're continuing to investigate, but it says that call, the chief says that call prompted an all hands on deck response here. You know, this is the scariest kind of call, a 911 call you can get, especially uh, when you look across the country and you see um, how many of these shootings are occurring. And so, uh, very scary call. The chief says that she believes this may be a hoax at this point, and if it is, she cannot believe who would do this kind of thing. She says Boulder police were on scene within three minutes. They contacted students and security here at the school district. School wasn't set to begin for another hour or so, so there are only about a tenth, about 200 students here of the general enrollment of 2,000 here at the school. Those students have now been evacuated onto the CU campus, and as you said, the school here is closed today. Activities after school canceled as well. Yeah, Cole, it sounds like things were handled pretty quickly. I know you've been in Boulder since this morning. Have you had a chance to talk to any folks there? What is the feeling you're getting from people right now in the area? I think you saw some of the feeling from the chief there. You see the emotion just in the first responders who had to respond to this call, fearing the worst in this town that has seen the worst happen in the past few years. Students and families were reunited at that reunification center on campus as well. Certainly a developing story, Cole. Thank you so much for breaking that down. And of course, we're continuing to monitor all of the threats coming into our state, some and schools across the country today as well. We have a story on 9news.com with updated information from every district that has gone on lockdown. We'll have more on these threats this afternoon on our news at 4 and 5. Right now, a big portion of our state is under some sort of winter storm warning. We've got a live look for you at this hour in Fort Collins. Some of the heaviest snow was supposed to fall there. Lookout Mountain in Golden was also hit with some solid snow this morning near whiteout conditions in parts of that area and really hard to see visibility through that stretch at this hour. Same thing goes here in southern Colorado snow coming down hard. This is a look at Wolf Creek ski area where again a complete whiteout winds blowing as well. That's certainly a factor. We've had reports of 70 mile an hour gusts this morning. Checking in on the drive, looking so much better than the morning commute. This is a live look at I-70 near Evergreen. And while the roads are looking clear, people are still taking their time to get where they need to go this afternoon. And we certainly are happy to see that. Lauren Robinson in the backyard for us right now to break down the rest of the timing because, Lauren, this storm is far from over. And that's exactly right. We are expecting another round of snow to push in this afternoon, and that could linger into the evening commute. So that's something you're going to want to be aware of. Also, we have all sorts of alerts going on right now. We have winter storm alerts. We have high wind alerts. We have wind chill alerts. We even have avalanche alerts going on across the state. So a lot happening with this snowstorm pushing its way through. And again, just because it's dying down right now does not mean we're done. We are expecting another round to push through this afternoon. Let's go ahead and take a look at our HD Doppler radar. You can see it starting to make its way through portions of the high country that will eventually make its way through the Denver metro area and other portions of the front range as we go over the next 
next couple of hours or so pushing in from the west. So we're going to continue to monitor that. But so far we've gotten a decent amount of snow in some areas. We got over four inches in Boulder, four inches reported in Pinewood Springs, almost four in Golden. We got just over three in Berthoud, almost three in Loveland, Longmont, Estes Park, and we got two and a half in Fort Collins. Evergreen reporting just over two. DIA not getting too much, just under an inch there. Most of the snow fell across portions of the Front Range and to the west. To the east, a lot of areas staying dry. So we are going to expect more snow today. Tomorrow we'll see a chilly afternoon, even though most of the snow will stick to the high country. But good news is we have another warm weekend ahead. I'll have all of those details for you just ahead of my full seven day forecast. Lauren, thank you so much. We'll check back in with you here soon. This winter storm is not just hitting us here. There are advisories and warnings happening across the country. Warnings this widespread. They're really not that common here to walk us through exactly why this storm is supposed to be so historic. We welcome in meteorologist Corey Rappenhagen. Hey, Corey. Hey, you know, that's the storm really is an amazing storm, really huge, really historic. But on the front range, we're kind of only feeling a little portion of that. So uh, kind of to our west and to our east and up in Minnesota, it's really strong. But because of our location here on the front range, we kind of get the short end of the stick here. But, you know, here we do. We do have winter uh, snow slightly falling here in North Arvada. Temperature is six degrees, so you add in a five to ten mile an hour breeze and it's uh, got the wind chill down there below zero. As far as those snow totals, not too impressive in our area here. We've got uh, one and a half inches of snow here in the uh, North Arvada area fell overnight. Uh, one thing that notice about this snow is it is, it's a wet, uh, heavy snow because uh, the water content in here is twice as much as it was just one week ago. So that's good news because uh, we'll get more moisture soaked into the ground and but the one thing that may impact uh, adversely is the roads because the roads were warm to begin with and then they froze and then you get the wet snow on top of that that even melts and refreezes and so we may have actually been seeing a little bit more trouble on the roads than we would with a, a, a storm that produces a little bit more uh, snow just because of the type of snow that it fell. And so we're, we'll watch and see if those uh, bands, those uh, little squalls that come through here over the next few hours are able to produce any more snow. But for right now, just light snow out here in Arvada. Corey, thank you so much. We know you love the snow so much and a good point on the afternoon commute. I know we'll have a close eye on that this afternoon as well. Corey, thank you so much again. It's almost cleared up now, but a semi truck jackknifed on I-25 this morning. Northbound traffic was a mess for hours. Thankfully, all lanes are back open and moving now, but that was a major headache. These storms often create dangerous situations on the roads. CDOT is warning drivers to be aware if they're getting on the road, please be careful. If you have the option to, they're encouraging you to delay your travel, especially north of Denver or in the mountains. We expect the snow to accumulate more and for, con for conditions to be more impactful in the afternoon, and we are anticipating a more difficult evening commute. CDOT also wants to remind drivers to not pass plows when driving and leave a safe distance following behind plows or really any vehicles, as those plows especially need room to do their jobs. The snow is having an impact at the airport as well. No big surprise there. According to Flight Aware, DIA has had 369 delays and 239 cancellations. Those numbers expected to rise throughout the day as the storm continues to make its way through our state. Denver by far and away the worst airport in the country for delays and cancellations right now. Denver is activating more emergency shelters overnight to help people stay warm. Rood Recreation Center near 6th and Federal will close at 7 tonight and tomorrow night to convert into an overnight shelter for people who are experiencing homelessness. It will run as a shelter from 8 at night to 7 in the morning both nights. Denver rec centers and libraries will also be open as warming centers during the day today and tomorrow. We are, of course, continuing to follow the storm throughout the day. You can get the latest news and weather anytime on our 9 News app. It is free to download in the Apple and Google Play stores.